The following training is designed to provide information regarding the Workplace Possibilities Program and how it partners with the county to provide services to covered employees who are either off work and receiving disability benefits or struggling at work due to a medical condition. So who is the standard? We are the provider of short and long-term disability benefits and absence management services for the county. One of the services provided is in conjunction with the disability benefits and is the Workplace Possibilities Program. Today we'll provide information about this program, the services and benefits that are available, outline who is eligible to receive these services, discuss the roles and responsibilities of all parties involved, and provide information on how covered employees are referred for services. The Workplace Possibilities team that works directly with the county includes the Workplace Possibilities Program Consultants and Coordinator. The Workplace Possibilities Consultants are the ones who will be working directly with the employees providing the services and the Coordinator is the individual who helps identify and refer employees for services. The Workplace Possibilities Program partners with the county to provide covered employees either stay at or return to work services. The program is designed with the goal of eliminating the need to actually file a disability claim for those employees with a medical condition who have not yet filed a claim or to help reduce the duration of the disability for those who are currently off work due to a disability. All services and accommodations provided are done so in partnership with the county the employees and the medical providers. Services and accommodations provided to covered employees are funded through the reasonable accommodation expense benefit provision of the contract and have no direct cost to the county. The program objectives are to help employees remain on the job or return to work as soon as medically capable while helping them maintain a positive connection with the workplace. Our services help reduce turnover and lower the impact of disability. Employers have also noted that the services help employees improve their engagement as employees many times are able to be productive and reduce pain or discomfort they were experiencing from a medical condition. We have two types of services available to covered employees, pre-claim or stay at work services and post-claim or return to work services. Both must be approved by the department's assigned HRO. Stay at work services are provided to employees who have not yet filed a claim but are receiving treatment for a medical condition causing them difficulties with performing their job. The goal at stay at work services is to help the employee safely and productively remain at work and avoid a disability claim. Return to work services are designed to assist employees on a disability claim. These employees are identified by the Workplace Possibilities Coordinator and then referred to the HRO for approval. Once approved by the HRO, the claim is assigned to a Workplace Possibilities Consultant to assist the employee with returning to work. The goal of Return to Work Services is to reduce the duration of the disability while safely and productively returning employees to work and avoiding a claim. All parties involved do have specific roles and responsibilities that help the program succeed. Your Workplace Possibilities Consultants are experts in return to and stay at work and will work directly with the employees to facilitate services. In addition to case management type services, they will also research and implement physical accommodations in partnership with the employee, HR, and the employer, as well as the manager. No adaptive equipment or accommodations are provided without first obtaining approval from the county. Once services are provided, the consultant will follow up with the employee and the HRO to address concerns and answer any questions. The employees receiving services are also made aware that should they have questions as they move forward, they can reach out at any point directly to the consultant. For the program to be successful, HR does need to be actively involved as well. Candidates for stay at work services are identified and referred for assistance by the HRO. They approve candidates for return to work services, work closely with managers in complex cases, and coordinate with the consultants during the accommodation process. 
The managers are also actively involved. They assist in identifying stay-at-work candidates and refer those employees to the HRO. These may be employees who are struggling to perform job duties, have complaints of pain, have a sudden decline in job performance, or are asking for accommodations. They collaborate closely with the HRO and the consultants to help ensure the best outcomes and support the employee as they go through the process. The services provided to your employees are individualized to the need and to the limitations and restrictions that those employees have. <laughs> the types of transitional work assignments can include but are not limited to graduated or reduced work hours, modified work tasks, or adaptive equipment. If adaptive equipment is provided, this is maintained and owned by the county except for personal items such as hearing aids or footwear. All equipment is funded by the standard through the Reasonable Accommodation Expense Benefit and there is no direct charge to the county for any of the services or equipment provided. Some examples of return to and stay at work services are listed on this slide. We will not review every example but ask that you notice in each example the consultant looked at a number of things that included the employee's limitations and restrictions, the employee's job and job responsibilities, and that they found a solution that allowed the employee to stay at or return to work in a safe and productive fashion. As shown in the customer service representative example, the consultant was working with an employee with vision and light sensitivity issues. The services provided included a consultation with the employee and the providing of customized tinted glasses to filter fluorescent light. This would be an example of an accommodation that the employee would keep should they ever leave employment with the policyholder. The director who suffered from lumbar pain and stiffness and was provided with an ergonomic assessment, a sit-stand desk, a chair, a headset, a mouse, and a keyboard with pad are examples of accommodations that allow the employee to stay on the job and these would be examples of things that the employer would keep and could use for another employee should this individual cease their employment with the policyholder. To help ensure that the services we provide are meeting the needs and providing services in an appropriate fashion, surveys are sent to employees at the time of closure to gather comments and feedback. It is important to note that stay at work candidates can only be identified by you, the employer. There has not been a claim filed as yet, so the standard or the Workplace Possibilities Program does not know who the employees are that could benefit from stay at work services. Stay at work candidates can only be identified by supervisors or the HRO when employees ask for assistance. The supervisors may notice an employee's struggles and offer help. Benefit program professionals may learn of employees' struggles and offer help. Once the HRO is notified about employees who may benefit from stay-at-work services, they will reach out to the employee and potentially refer them to the Workplace Possibilities Program for Services. At that time, the Workplace Possibilities Coordinator will assist the stay-at-work process. The process is outlined on this slide, which shows step-by-step -step what happens following the identification of stay-at-work candidates. As shown on this diagram, the stay at work process involves and partners with the employee, HR, and the medical provider. It is this partnership that helps ensure the success of the program and brings a benefit to both the employee and the employer. Although it is rare that employees decline workplace possibilities services, they are always made aware that the services we provide are voluntary. This slide shows a frequently asked questions document regarding the Workplace Possibilities Program. If you have additional questions regarding the program or the referral process, we ask that you reach out directly to your HRO. The program is in place to provide your most valuable asset, your employees, with assistance during a time that they need it the most, and we look forward to partnering with you in providing these services. Thank you.